Hello and welcome back friends to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and here we want to talk about the easiest way to remember cell signaling pathways means uh, the best and fast possible way to remember any complicated cell signaling is just for you and actually uh, build a device a system which can help you to remember and recall cell signaling quite the easiest way so what is it I am calling it as a five fingers to remember concept or five finger concept of remembering cell signaling pathways and it is nothing but uh, to think about five fingers uh, so in this case it's your left uh, hand and you, you take the left hand and the palm uh, where all the writing is there right now you have five fingers right and in these five fingers uh, five important parameters of a cell signaling will be justified now whenever you're reading a cell signaling pathway these five parameters are the most important things for every single cell signaling pathway so in this video i'm going to talk about the ip3 dag signaling pathway or ip3 dag signaling pathway so i'm going to share how you need to recall and remember this ip3 dag signaling pathway with the help of the five finger concept of cell signaling as well as i'm going to share the actual cell signaling methods as well as the easy way to remember with the help of a mnemonic so let's begin Again, as per our rule of five finger concept, we start with the signaling molecule. And in case of IP3 DAC signaling pathway, the first signaling molecule here is hormones. Just like the GPCR, other GPCR pathways, IP3 DAG pathway also is a hormone signaling pathway. So example of this hormone will be oxytocin. Okay. So the second parameter is the receptor. And the receptor will be hormone receptor. Obviously, in this case, if we take oxytocin as an example hormone, the receptor will be termed as oxytocin receptor. Fine. Let's move to the third important parameter. That is cellular effectors and second messengers. The cellular effectors in this case of IP3 TAG signaling pathway is a sequence of events and that's like the first enzyme phospholipase C. So this phospholipase C is an enzyme. Once this enzyme gets activated, it, it cleaves PIP2 phosphatidylinositol bisphosphate 2 into IP3 plus DAG inositol trisphosphate plus diacylglycerol. So when you break this PIP2 into two, IP3 plus DAG, both IP3 and DAG takes two different routes to do two separate types of cellular impact and effect. While IP3 takes the route of releasing calcium ions which are stored in our endoplasmic reticulum to come out into the cytosol. While in other hand, DAG is going to activate protein kinase C enzyme which is going to even activate other proteins inside the cell by phosphorylating them. So this is uh, the sequence of cellular activation. Now, uh, the fourth one in this occasion is transcription factors. And the example in this case are MAP kinase pathway interactions. Yes, IP3 DAG signaling pathway can also activate and influence MAP kinase pathway or also can activate RAS protein, which is a component of MAP kinase pathway. Apart from that, the common transcription factor used in the IP3 DAG signaling pathway are FOS and JUM as well as AP1. So these are very common transcription factors for IP3 DAG signaling pathway, particularly the hormone mediated signaling like oxytocin signaling. And ultimately the most important factor is the cellular effect. What kind of cellular effect is done by IP3 DAG signaling pathway as a result of this pathway? And the answer is many things like cellular proliferation, apoptosis of endometrium during menstruation. So these are very most important factors and functions played by IP3 DAG signaling. As we're dealing with oxytocin, I must say that this hormone is also linked with this apoptosis of endometrium during menstruation that regulates the process of menstruation. As well as the cellular proliferation is another uh, way to go uh, for the IP3 DAG signaling pathway. Now, if I show you uh, this total IP3 DAG path, we have to remember that. Remember one thing whenever you see IP3 DAG, because this is the title of that pathway. So remember, IP3 DAG, you put a plus sign between, so IP3 plus DAG, you get PIP2. So definitely PIP2 is broken down into IP3 and DAG. And by whom? By the enzyme PLC, phospholipase C. Now, whenever you see IP3, that's three kind of deals with the calcium. Remember, because calcium is CA3+. So calcium uh, is linked with this pathway. So who does allow the calcium to move out from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cytosol? The answer is uh, that IP3, right? So that's the way to remember. And then last thing is the DAG, that's for G. G means cell growth and proliferation. So definitely this pathway linked with the cellular proliferation and PIP2 broken down into IP3 and DAG by for PLC or phospholipase C. 
and uh, as ip3 we are seeing so definitely it's dealing with calcium ions so that's another easy way to remember and recall this pathway if you forget now this is the actual pathway you can see whenever oxytocin binds with the receptor then it, this also activates this this g protein coupled receptor obviously it's also linked with gpcr that activates g protein g protein is going to activate this phospholipase c now phospholipase c breaks breaks down pip2 into ip3 and dag now dag activates protein kinase c while ip3 binds with the endoplasmic reticulum calcium L channel so we call it ligand gated calcium channel that is present in the endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum now the moment ip3 binds with that that channel channel gets open so calcium ions start releasing out okay so that's that's one easy way to remember in this case okay So that's how we, uh, you can remember the IP3 DAG signaling pathway. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with uh, other friends of yours and obviously subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Thank you.